Check this out. I have the same lawnmower. If I wanted to get a new carb, is the replacement the same as the GCV160? That's a good question. I googled and can't find anything on it. Verified. Any help would be appreciated. To answer your question, no, unfortunately they are not the same. However, they are very similar. So there's two major factors you have to answer before attempting to swap or use a older style carburetor on a newer Honda GCV 170 engine. Number one, do I have a manual throttle or adjustable throttle? And number two, do I have a auto choke system or a manual choke system? Now, for the sake of this video, we're gonna focus on a engine that is a fixed throttle with the auto choke system. And the reason behind this is, this is pretty much the industry standard across the board. You're not gonna get into manual controls until you get to the commercial grade or professional grade power equipment. So here's what I found to be the most affordable, easiest way to modify that will work on a Honda GCV 170 engine. All right, as you see, we pretty much played around with a few different carburetors. Starting on the left here, this is the OEM part. This is what's gonna be found on the new Honda HRN. In the middle here, you're gonna find the carburetor that's found most common on the older style GCV 160s. Part number 16100Z8B901. This one didn't want to work because it didn't match up with the auto choke system. Basically, as you can look here, when you try to engage the auto choke, it doesn't even hit the auto choke lever. It swings right past it. So this one didn't work. I mean, you could probably put it here, but I mean, it's just going to go back. So this carburetor did not line up correctly. And lastly, the one on the right was the only one that was successfully uh, able to get to work. Um, there is a few drawbacks, but in general, it was the one that worked the best. And this is part number 16100Z0L862. This is the most basic stock carburetor that came on the older style engines. This is a manual choke lever here and a uh, non auto choke system setup. Uh, basically, this is the basic carburetor, the most basic one on the market. So now that we narrowed it down to one carburetor, I'll show you the difference here and some of the hiccups you're gonna run into, but overall it does work. First off, on the OEM carburetor, on the GCV 170, uh, the, the auto choke and the th throttle plate lever work hand in hand. On our replacement one, you'll notice that there is no contact between the throttle plate and the choke lever. Like I said, this was designed to work with a manual choke lever and non-auto choke systems. So one thing you'll notice on the old or the original equipment, you've got a limiter cap here. This is uh, found on the original carburetor. This is also leads to the pilot jet. This is more of an emissions thing. This is designed to break if you try to tamper with it. It doesn't allow you from the factory to pretty much enrich it or enhance it. Um, so that's one thing. And if you notice on our replacement carburetor, it's sealed off. It's not even there. So that's one other difference between the two carburetors. Now, even though there is no limiter cap right here, it still allows, there's still transports in here that allow fuel to go back uh, and, or flow through the carburetor. And last and most important thing, if you notice that the throttle plate or the auto choke valve on this carburetor is always forced to the closed position. That's because it's gonna work with the auto choke system we, where the actuator itself opens and closes this for us. On the flip side, you'll notice that this carburetor or this auto choke plate is always forced in the open position. And that's because this was originally designed to work with a manual cable or manual throttle. This would allow the operator to manually close the choke plate start the engine once it warms up they would manually open it back open now we want to do the opposite we want to force this to all to the always closed position because we want the auto choke actuator to do the work for us basically what you want to do take the carburetor like this and remove the th uh, auto choke plate next off go ahead and remove the pin completely out so basically it's, it's going to be a little difficult to figure out but we just want to redirect this spring in the direction to where the auto choke valve is always closed. So go ahead and reinsert the pin. And this is the easiest way I found to do it. Position the pin just like this. So the holes are pointing up and down, north and south. 
your hook's gonna be right here. Next off, you wanna make sure the spring, the base of the spring is hooked in right here. So at this step, you should look like this. When it's all said and done, it should look something like this. You got your base hook down here and the other hook, the top hook, right behind this little, this little arm right here, the longest arm. Now this is modified for me, you don't have to do this. I put this extender on here just so you can make better contact, but it should work either way. And it should move back and forth just like this. Once you have that set up, go ahead and reinstall your throttle plate. You hear it click in and voila, there we go. Now it should be go to the forced close position every time. So now we're gonna test it out. I'm gonna show you guys see I'm gonna show you guys what's going on and why it's running rough for the first minute or so until the actuator itself engages and then everything's smooth. So basically at the end of the day, this is the only carburetor that I was able to get to work successfully with the auto choke system. And that seems to be the consistency across the board is initial startup a cold start. Just keep in mind, if you do go with this setup, you're gonna have a little bit of a rough idle for the first minute or so until this actuator opens up the choke valve. But the good news is, once this valve is completely open, you're golden. Once it reaches operating temperature and this thing's open, starting and restarting this engine's not a problem. It's, it's, it runs just fine. Just keep in mind at any kind of cold start, or if you, you know, walk away from the mower for a good 30 minutes or so, or 20 minutes, it might close on you. But as long as it's hot outside and it's warm outside, this valve will be open. And once it's open, you're golden. Now, basically, at the end of the day, do I recommend doing this? Not exactly. Um, for you guys that are not comfortable taking apart the, car the carburetor, you know, taking off the choke plate and flipping that around, it it's not a good idea. In that case, just bite the bullet and buy a new carburetor. But if you think you could do it, I would definitely invest in it. You know, like I said, this is only $20. The original one, the OEM one right now is about $80 to $100. Um, but yeah, this will work just fine. It's just, you know, there's a little, there's two little hiccups that it comes with, but it's not, not a big deal overall. And I'm not going to lie guys, honestly, it sounds like it runs smoother with this carburetor. I, it could be all in my head. I don't know, but I was watching the RPMs and they, they are pretty consistent. You know, keep in mind, we're not under any kind of load. We're not cutting grass, but overall she just, she was purring like a kitten once this was open. Thanks for watching guys. If you have any ideas, any other methods we could play around with, please let me know. And thanks for watching, hope this helps.